It's recording. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Right. Yes. Serious. Mm, okay. Hey, guys. How's it going? Jake Wilson here. I'm joined by uh, my good friend, Mr. Dan. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, not bad. Thank you. How are you? I was talking to the camera. Okay. I meant you. Oh. I meant you. Okay. Also. It's been a long while since we've done a video, actually, mate. Yeah, yeah I know. I've been, I've been re rethinking the video situation, which is nice. We've, Trying one uh, actually in a sensible place to do a video rather than yeah the weather's a bit inclement at the <laughs> moment so we're uh, we're stuck inside we've been working on some some slightly secret stuff as yeah. well yeah which oh oh may or may not be out by the time this video lands what's that oh yeah 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 uh, yeah I forgot about that um, <laughs> so um, so what are we talking about today we are talking about the Kemper. <laughs> Dun, dun, Yes, good, isn't it? I, I have currently, I have recently bought one, currently. I currently own one, mm. but I've recently bought one. I got mine second hand a few years ago, yep. and it's it's kind of been like a bit of a life upgrade that's allowed me to do certain things yeah. I couldn't do before, especially when you start uh, using the remote with it and all that sort yep. of thing. So, um, first of all, you, you bought one recently, you bought the Power Head. Yeah, uh, power Rack. Power Rack. Yes. Right, so I've got the non-power head. So you're the, yeah. you've got the, the sort of superior. I, yeah, I don't know about superior. <laughs> I went for the. I thought if I was going to buy one, I'd go right. for all the bells and whistles, uh, and it covers all the bases. And it's kind of mine. Whereas I think you use yours predominantly for recording. Yeah, yeah. Mine's going to be predominantly for gigging. So I thought the racks a bit easier because you just pop the lids on and it's it's safe. It's also a bit more fun. To plug into a cab, oh, 100%. rather than rather than go through yeah. uh, the rigmarole of the FRFR thing. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, because the Kemper uh, models the entire uh, rig, so from the microphone to the uh, to the cabinet voicing um, and then the head. Obviously, you can split those. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but because it does all that, if you put it through a cabinet, it will be convolving that sound sort of twice. Yeah. Right, so you need to use something that replicates that sound very truthfully for that to come across. So I, I've used it with an FRFR cab, yep. powered cab, um, which I love. And, I, and what there are advantages and disadvantages to both. So maybe we could start there. Okay, my opinion on this is having done a lot of testing of both using a real guitar cabinet and FRFR is when you're hearing an FRFR on stage, you aren't hearing the sound of a guitar amp behind you. You're hearing the sound of a mic'd up yep. guitar amp. And that is a little bit disconcerting for some people that are used to hearing a guitar cabinet behind them. Mm. It's much more polished perhaps mm. and more hi-fi and and as well as sort of hi-fi, it's there's a lot of bottom end that's not like a cabinet sat on the floor. Right. It's, it's more of a processed yeah. uh, situation. It's hard to explain, but having done a lot of testing myself, I know that I'm going to be using it with a guitar cabinet on stage. Right. And that's my preference uh, because for me, I a lot of my uh, performances, which are like banks of sounds mm. on the Kemper, is focused around a single amp or a clean amp and a dirty amp. I'm not someone that's going to be switching mm -hmm. amps every five seconds and if if you want the true sound of those amps you're better off with an frfr because it models the cabinets as well you know an ac30 mm. is going to sound more similar to a marshall than you think through the same cabinet. yeah for a marshall cab yeah, it's, yeah I, um that's very true uh, because obviously the cabinet is a huge part of the sound so more so than i've ever given it credit for if yeah, I'm honest. And, and for my my purposes um I often use in ears, yeah, um, and I figured that I wanted almost the 
cabinet to be a, a good monitor representation of what was going to front of house too. Yeah, absolutely. So there's there's all those kinds of considerations, but I have to say, you know, even we're talking about, you know, the sort of profiling, the convenience, the options, the routing options for front of house to monitors yeah. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. These are all really good reasons to go to modeled rigs, but I still love the sound of mic'd up amps. Oh, um, yeah. You know, in certain environments. Definitely. If you've got, you know, if you've got time for like proper sound checks and, and things like that, yeah. you know, th th that's and an still understanding band as well. Yeah, you know, it's if, still the most fun, I think. Yeah, a hundred percent. And a pedal you know, that like we all still yeah. like that stuff. But I think there's a, a reality of life as a musician that actually means that modeling rigs let's call them just a sort of broad boundary. modeling slash profile yeah but like, you know we might just refer yeah. to it as modeling for today um even though it's technically not doing that let's say digital rigs then yeah digital <laughs> so so using a digital rig actually has certain aspects to it that will make it actually sound better once you've sent it through the entire process of the gig so yeah. like you know in the mix and all, all this stuff yeah definitely with reliability from night to night yeah. And things like, I, I love the effects on the Kemper, especially yeah. after all the, the recent updates. You know, the, the kind of routing and the kind of flexibility you have over your sounds, you can really produce it. But therein lies a negative as, as well, mm -hmm. that you almost have to have a production rehearsal oh, yeah. to get your sounds like really, really tight with it. Yeah, which is funny because we were actually talking yeah. about this the other day. I was talking about, I'm probably, because I've only recently moved over to Kemper, I'm going to hire a rehearsal room for a couple of hours and dial it in at like mad stage volume both listening to my cab and listening to the front of house and making sure it lines up and and you admired my... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like... Fighting the cause. Commitment to tone yes, over absolutely. here. Yes, it, absolutely. It's... Uh, but I feel better knowing that my sound on stage is good, but overall, as a musician, I've always been, as long as it sounds good in front of house, you know, as long as it's good for me on stage, good enough, I would prefer the sound in front of house to be tippy top you mm. know because at the end of the day that's that's the mm. the goal you know if it's sitting well with the band i would i would really hate to know that my sound in front of house is too toppy or you know too shrill too much flubby bass you know mm. I, I like to know that when i plug in that xlr and give it to either random sound man or you know high profile sound man that it's gonna be what i want my guitar to sound like mm. they're welcome to do their thing to it but I'd like to know that it's as good as physically possible. <laughs> absolutely love um, is when the sound guy goes oh you've got stereo out yeah now none of the profiles are stereo profiles 
But when you get stereo delays and choruses going on, mm -hmm. if you've got in ears, or you know, if you're the out front experience is, is just like mind blowingly cool sometimes mm -hmm. when used properly. Yeah. Right. So there's there are all these sort of considerations um, to that, that, that are advantages, if you like, over over a conventional rig. I mean, to get that kind of setup on a conventional rig, it's like kind of... Oh, the, the sort of phase issues involved yeah, in running yeah. stereo and the amount of gear you have to bring as well. Because at the end of the day, if you're on in-ears, you can bring the Kemper That's it. and you have stereo rig. Mm. No no faffing, no messing. And you know that you, you know that it's going to load the sounds that you, yeah. you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> both had sort of personal yeah requirements or reasons yeah that meant that the Kemper was the right thing for us versus other amp situations so what was your sort of thought process there well I've wanted one for ages if I'm completely honest with you um, I just couldn't justify the money because I most of my guitar gigs I was in bands like we talked about earlier that were kind enough to kind of let me turn up on stage and mm. if anything they encouraged it so <laughs> valve amps were were the thing and like we said still love them um and i was just looking for a reason to buy one mm. i think and the opportunity came up next year i'm doing a lot of a lot more showy type things um it's going to be the same band for a lot of stuff through a production company Theater stuff yeah um and it's gonna but the band's gonna flip flop between shows so right. Uh, like tribute stuff it is. Right. Um, the show will change, but I kind of need the gear to stay the same. So right, right. So there, there's a, a kind of level of quality that's going to go through. Yeah, and, and and it means if one night we're doing one thing and the other night we're doing the other, I don't have to swap any gear. Yeah. I just go to a new bank of sounds, uh, and doing that kind of thing is going to be quite in ear heavy. <laughs> Authentic, yeah. Like with digital stuff, if you're going for like a one day, you might be doing a Beatles thing, so you, you're all AC30, yeah. And then another day, you're doing I don't know the Who, and you can use a high watt, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So you can get you can get really close to those sounds, yeah. And I think being on in ears as well, I'll still I'm allowed a cab on stage, luckily, uh, <laughs> but just to break me in, you know, I might end up not losing the cab, right, um, right, but. Being on in-ears and stuff, I just think the experience is going to be so much more consistent from night to yeah. night as well. And there is that whole pain in the ass situation when you turn up to a gig with just the Kemper and just your in-ears, but you're, you have, you're kind of waiting for the sound guy yeah. uh, to turn up <laughs> and, 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 and be ready for you so you can do it. Whereas if you have got your sort of self-contained yeah. situation, you can at least get yourself up and running, make sure everything's totally. working. Totally. And, and for me as well, on top of all of that stuff, it's the reliability. Right. Like, Valve amps are reliable, mm. you know, as much as people say they're not, they are, but it's the inconsistency, you know, mm. if, if power's not quite great in a venue, your amp will sound different. If the mic is in a different place on the cab that night, it's going to sound different in your in-ears. Mm. And I just think the consistency and the reliability factor was a bit of a no-brainer. Takes a bit me. of stress away. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I want something that's going to work, and I think that's why, as well, I chose the Kemper over alternative modelling things, was just how consistent it is uh, and how easy it is to dial up the sounds yeah um you know with the profiles available it seems like certain other amp modeling things you call up the amp and then you have to do all the tweaking and there's almost limitless possibilities yeah, yeah. with the profiles if you find one you like well you can change the eq and add effects but that's it you know that's the sound this is my philosophy with it as well um is is that 
it, even in the studio or whatever, I don't really tweak anything. Yeah. I like to kind of go to the sound and it's a yes or no decision. Definitely. You know, I go, okay, is that the one? Yes, yeah, so that's the one I use. Yeah. Um, versus, okay, right, there's there's a ballpark. Now I need to model it into a situation that I'm okay with. So it's, it's, I'm not saying that it sounds any, you know, there, there are advantages over, let's say, Axe FX. Certainly the new Axe FX stuff that's just come out. Yeah. Um, you know, it sounds sounds amazing, but, but but it's it's more about your use case and how you plan on doing things. I mean, notoriously, Axe FX, the Helix, their signal routing possibilities yeah. um, within the unit itself, not like inputs and outputs, mm. um, are much more comprehensive and the, the kind of, the effects tweakability goes beyond the kind of casual Kemper user. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because of course, Kemper have done a lot more in recent months even yeah. to improve their effects, but I still feel as though that because there isn't an editor interface yet, at the time of making this video, come on, Kemper, yeah, yeah. Um, crying out loud! The, the, you have to do all the tweaking on the on the box. Yeah. Now, this is fine for me because I don't actually use that many effects. Yeah. I use delay, reverb, sometimes chorus. I think that's what I was going to say for me as well. I love effects, mm. but like for ninety percent of the work that I do, I need good amp sound, some reverb, delay, bit of chorus, occasional fuzz or filters and stuff. But I mean, <clears> it's all very straightforward it's nothing insane and you can get some like really cool we were saying earlier that there's a lot of effects in the Kemper mm. that probably aren't called what you think they're called you know they're they're presented in a much different way the controls don't you know like so for I really like envelope filters so to get an envelope filter sound there isn't one in there you have to go into like wah wah set it to touch and change a load of parameters mm. to make it do it it's in there but whereas on something like the Helix, I would imagine you can just go envelope filter. Well, they, they, they will have a kind of model. Yeah, of like a Mutron. Yes, or a, exactly. Yeah. So it's a difference in philosophy, whereas it was Kemper sort of thinking more um, like more audio science Definitely. rather what, than... Uh, once you get your head around that as well, like I've not struggled. It took me... I've used the Kemper a fair bit before I bought one, but not in depth. And so it took me a day tops to learn my way around the whole unit and where things are. Mm and how to, you know, I don't even think about it now. When you first get it, the yeah. sort of twisty knob philosophy is a bit, <laughs> well, yeah. is a bit odd, but once you get your head around it, it's, it, it's it, absolutely fine. It doesn't feel very modern. I think that's no. that's the thing. I mean, again, I just want to sort of stress that actually the, the, the sound of the thing is only as good as the profile you're kind of, you know, getting up. So absolutely, the tweaking really can be kept to, to a minimum. And once you're in the rig manager, which is yeah. a which is a, a decent bit of software, but it's it's still if, if, if we were using Windows ninety eight, yeah, would be, be at home on that. But it's still great. It still <laughs> it's, works, right? Absolutely, yeah. moving to Kemper overall, rather than well just just you know but my sort of personal habits of going is that good amp sound that's great I get like um, choice anxiety sometimes right option paralysis yeah option paralysis that's the one and uh, I'm just I'm just much better at making those kinds of creative decisions if it's it's a yes no yep. versus it's a it's a well that's nearly there let's just mess around with it um, it's more time for playing as well I've found with the Kemper because of the yes no thing. Yeah. I don't spend ages tweaking it. Like I, I do get a little bit anal about delay and reverb mm. sounds, but at the end of the day, that's only me that cares about that. And I, I very, very rarely record any of the kind of wet signal going into the camera, but yeah. you can, I mean, maybe this is a good point at which to talk about routing options. Yeah. Because for recording, the good thing is that, that reamping is exceptionally convenient. Um, and it's something I, I, I think is it has made me record DIs a lot more regularly just because I know that when the mix evolves that yeah. could, that's an option. You can also just pair off the uh, effects or the the amp kind of dry or, or whatever. Yes. There's tons yeah. and tons of ways in which you could record what's going on in a, in a really flexible and non-destructive way. Yeah. 
And what about in a live environment? How do you find I, that? I find it amazing, to be honest, to be able to, it's pre sort of set up that your monitor, uh, I think it's called the monitor output, yeah. which is either, um, you know, you can go out to in ears, quarter inch, or you can go with my powered one straight out to a cab. Mm. Obviously with yours, you can use a power amp. Mm. Um, but you have control over that entirely independently of the front of house mix, which is brilliant. So you can change the EQ of the cabinet, you can change the volume of the cabinet, uh, or, or your own independent send, mm. uh, regardless of cabinet. Um, and I have mine set that my front of house level is constantly set at one volume. So the master volume on my Kemper only controls my on stage sound. So for the whole night, no matter what I do on stage, the front of house gets completely um, level signal. And the, the sound people uh, oh, love mate, you for yes, that. Absolutely. Because, because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't ruin their sound. Whereas it obviously goes without saying though, with a conventional mic'd up amp, you're into uh, Painesville. Oh yeah, as soon as you touch anything on your amp if it's mic'd up, you're gonna get some <laughs> yeah. filthy looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's worth saying as well that the attitude towards gear like the Kemper and the Helix and stuff has changed dramatically. Like, yeah. sound men are extremely happy, for the mo in 90% of the time, if you turn up with one of those pieces of gear. Whereas I think back in the days before it was uh, as good as it is now, often there would be some sort of like, yeah, I'd rather mic you up if I can. I think there is a um, there is still a hangover um, mm. attitude that I've experienced very very rarely, but but uh, it's usually just because they, they their mind is usually changed by the end of the gig. Absolutely, to be fair, yeah. But, but uh, anyway, I think the less said about that, the better. <laughs> um. So. Disadvantages with the whole profiling system versus modern, a big one for me, and I know that you can kind of replicate this in a roundabout way, but I, I would sometimes like the kind of room sound to come. Yeah. To come. In my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, I want that kind of amp in a room sound. Well, I've got to put a, a reverb yeah. on it that, that sort of emulates that. But at the same time, I kind of, I wish that there was some way, and I, I know this is like exceptionally complicated maths at this stage, um, to, to have, that, that kind of acoustic impression too, because what the Kemper does, no matter where you put the mics, it does flatten it into a snapshot of what's going on at that point. Definitely, and I, uh, you know, no favoritism on uh, people that produce profiles, but mm. I think the Michael Britt profiles have it right because when you dial them up, they already have a nice amp style, mm. room style reverb. Or Very applied popular. to most of the pro and automatically that jumps out of me because it's a lot jumps out to me because it's a lot more mm. friendly to play straight out the yes no situation yeah yeah you know it's um, a very very popular profile yeah uh, obviously there are tons and tons of people who have sort of developed a cottage industry yeah of creating these profiles um you you, you know even the sort of uh, get good drums yeah. have a profile thing now and i think victory do their own but yeah tons and tons uh, of people at amp factory of course yeah um and, and all of these uh, have different styles of doing things different philosophies of how they put sounds together and they do actually sound pretty different yeah. across, across the board and and but what's good is kemper give you the opportunity to mess around with it a bit i find that a li little bit too messing can get destructive of yeah. the tone. Yeah. Um, it makes it sound a bit flatter. Uh, yeah. But one thing I do find um, is uh, uh, changing the cabs yeah. can, can make a huge difference. Yeah. And, and, and obviously you can use any cab from anything. Yeah. Now, there's this thing called a merged profile where you record the direct signal at the same time or um, with the same settings rather, and then you m do the profile with the cab and then you can match those two together. Yeah. Uh, uh, and if you're at firmware 6 or higher, I found a load of Celestian IRs already on the Kemper. And mine was brand new, so they must be, you know, there yeah. must have been an update they provided. And, and if you have the the IRs that you like, mm. it's fairly straightforward. You need to just load them into the Kemper. Um, I think you can only do it with stick, cab pack. though. Can you only do it with a stick? Or yeah, but, but in the software, you can just go to the cab pack and load them in. But that, right. again, this is something where I find that... Um, the other, uh, the, com the competitors have a kind of much more smooth, slick system yeah, uh, for the, doing all this stuff. The user interface mm. in general for, obviously we've mentioned there's no editor, there is a rig manager, but 
it makes everything a little bit more complex than it needs to be. I, I agree. Think, I agree. You know, there it's... should be an easier way. But in my honest opinion, having tried a lot of them, haven't tried the Axe Effects 3, my key concern was having the best feeling mm. and most realistic amp sounds. And I think it's kind of a common consensus that if effects aren't really your deal, the Kemper's a bit of a no-brainer. It depends on how you work, because we uh, know yeah. people that use the Axe Effects and, uh, exactly. and swear by it. I mean, so. I think Pliny um, uses Axe Effects, but both guitarists are going through the same Axe Effects unit. <laughs> Fantastic. And, uh, you know, that, that just blows my mind, yeah. um, that, that it has that much sort of processing power. So it's just a use case thing. I'd love an Axe Effects. I'd love a, 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 I yeah, so all of the high end stuff. Any companies you know? out there that want to <laughs> send us? Well, exactly. This isn't this isn't paid for by Kemper. Obviously, this isn't a Kemper advertisement. No, this it's is more a, like a children in need appeal. Yeah, this is a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple of things to mention there's no parallel routing for the effects no there? you've got you've got a fixed chain um which again doesn't bother me in the slightest uh there's only been one occasion when i missed it just because i wanted to stack uh like an octaver and a kind of synthy sound mm. i would have rather than been in parallel rather than in series but at the end of the day yeah very minor yeah. um and obviously you can do that on the competitor unit so if effects are more your thing Perhaps there's a better option out there. Yeah, um, agreed. So we both use the Kemper remote with yep. it, which unlocks quite a few extra sort of things like the looper and all that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, and I just think the sort of two-way communication between the, mm. the uh, remote and the Kemper is, you know, you get your tuner on there, you can see real-time uh, display of everything. And the remote, to be honest, was one of the reasons that I was swayed towards the Kemper mm. because of how easy it is to set up. Mm. Being able to set an effects block up on the Kemper, yeah. press the button, press it, oh, oh, it's there. Um, Done, you know. How do you set up your uh, pedals on the remote, like in performance? Yeah, so at the moment, um, I've been trying to be productive when I'm testing sounds and rather than just going through and wildly I'm trying to set up banks so that I can try them out on gigs and stuff and like mm. I said I tend to stick to one amp or two amps per uh, performance just because I prefer that consistency mm. I'm more about different gain levels and slightly different EQs and generally good advice things like that because yeah if if you if you have like a kind of sound picture out front yeah and that guitar is constantly sh shifting yeah it's, it's the mid-range thing as well between different profiles you know an AC30 sits in an extremely different mm. place to other amps. It's got that real forward focused. Which is going to be fine if you have a production rehearsal and you yeah. know that that's going to work, but normally normally you don't. No. Um, yeah, so I've got, um, for the shows that I'm doing, I've been slowly setting up banks that are more song dependent mm. and stuff, but I have a lot of banks that, uh, so one of my favorite profiles I found is the Michael Britt has a Diaz 100 watt head uh, pack which is uh, I think what um Warren Haynes uses one of them, they're oh, pretty cool. hard to come by. Anyway, uh, because he's done a specific pack of that, there's about 30 or 40 profiles of just this one amp. So I've got it set up normally clean to dirty, if you're looking at the remote. Mm. So I normally have a clean sound, and I never have a completely clean sound, it's character clean, you know. Mm. Uh, crunch, uh, full on distortion, and then normally two different lead sounds, either like a, a, you know, a wet lead mm. and a more dry lead kind of thing. Uh, and then per preset of a performance, I then have all the stomps with 
things on it and I tend to have some kind of modulation on foot switch one, some kind of overdrive or boost mm. on foot switch two, uh, on foot switch three tends to be like a volume boost and then foot switch four some kind of delay. Yeah. Um, but that does change from performance to performance. Do you um, use a, um, a volume pedal or an expression pedal in this case? I don't. I don't yet. Um, it unlocks a lot of cool yeah, like morphing stuff. That's really definitely. Cool. I've, I'm using the morphing a lot. Right. Though. I didn't think that is a huge thing for the Kemper. Like morphing allows you to do a lot of things that amps mm. can't do. You know, you can with the morphing, you can change the whole EQ, gain structure, and volume of an amp or an amp and effects levels and just with either an expression pedal or double touching the foot switches on the mm. pedal. So instead of using an expression, I'm using the, the double touch. Double right. touch. But I would like to get expression pedals, but at the moment I'm trying to keep gear to as much of a yeah, minimum as yeah. possible. But and it's like another to... little auxiliary thing that's yeah. sitting out there on a, another... Yeah, it's something yeah, for someone yeah. to stand on exactly. and break. Possibly. Um, but of course, like you can get the, the missing engineering one, which allows you another switch. Yeah. Um, so there's all these extra things that just make this a, 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 the perfect unit for lots of professionals to use, and, and that's why so many of them have gone that Definitely. way. And it's worth a quick mention that on the remote as well, I'm sure there'll be a nice cutaway now. Yeah, um, it's not it's it's not in shop. It's <laughs> down here, so. Is the amount of uh, pedal inputs that yeah. the remote gives you? You have four if you mm. want it. And what's nice about that is they don't have to be expression pedals. Mm. You can add just switches, latching yeah. foot switches. I mean, to be honest, it just covers so much i don't miss having a pedal board mm. when i'm using the kemper yeah I think, if i'm honest and i think the vast majority of guitarists are, are going or even bassists because they yeah. sound I, I love the bass sounds that yeah, come out of this thing same yeah you know if i'm recording bass it's a bit of a game changer because i can have a di signal and and, and an uh, amp signal yeah. or even just a model pedal yeah I think there's like way more than most people are ever gonna need. 100%. It's kind of it, most people would be happy with using 10% of what these things. Yeah, can do. absolutely. Um, yeah. So the only point I was gonna make that I forgot to mention earlier is one of the big selling points for the Kemper for me is there is no lag between presets. No. You know, no. it's as seamless as it possibly can be, and you have spillover of reverbs and delays. Yeah. Um, you can do that with things like the Helix snapshots and the. The Axe FX has scenes, I think, um, but this is just unlimited. You can switch, you know, there doesn't seem to be any lag or dropout or weirdness at all between sounds. But every time I feel like I should say something about my experience with um, these other products, I kind of think that I'll get someone on a forum going, well, actually, yeah. you'll find that if you set it up like in this mode, it's just it's just one of those things yeah, where, you, uh, where there may be some information. Um, uh, and really, we're, both of us are more experienced with the Kemper than we are with any yeah, of the other yeah. things. Well, so I, we, use, I use XFX while well, I'm using one tonight. On the shows. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's um, it's not really about, I'm not, you know, I think it's almost, talking about the sounds is almost um, the wrong approach. It, it, yeah. It, it, they it, can all sound amazing. Yeah, exactly. It's how they're set up. It's, you know, it's only going to sound as good as the profile or guitar you're using. Definitely. When, you do it, when, you, when we're doing our demos, you know, we've got to take into account the whole system, the, the kind of the thought behind each sound. It's if you just buy a Kemper out of the box, it's not going to sound like that. No. You're going to have to load it with a few things. Yeah, and that is different to the Axe FX. You know, it, it, in many ways, or even the, the Helix, or, uh, or, or or you name it. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're talking about the sort of high-end, professional level um, sort of. Gear, yeah, and, gear, and I mean it's it's, it's a price point thing as well. Yeah. For a lot of people, like like we said earlier, I've been putting off buying a Kemper for possibly two and a half years, maybe maybe longer, just because of the amount of money. And yes, it's not the my rig cost me two thousand one hundred and something, mm. uh, which was for the remote, the rack, and the cabling mm. and all that. Um, and yeah, it's about the same price as one boutique amp. Yeah, yeah, but. I've never paid that for an amp in my no, life. No. You know, I buy used amps. My amps get gigged, so it, it was it was a big financial yeah. commitment for me. Whereas someone 
might not like I was looking at the like HX Stomp and things like that because it's just like there is now really good modeling at pretty much any price point and, and possibly and realistically moving into the kind of computer domain as oh, well yeah. like plugins now you know so there's some real sort of uh, leading plug-in brands it just sound amazing <laughs> yeah. now you know um uh what was I gonna say there's another thing that came about then was it that we've spent all of our money on valve amps and pedals <laughs> and now we both play through computers yeah, yeah was yeah. that probably the point That's... we were gonna make there oh dear <laughs> sounds good to you it is good yeah. I think that's the important thing it's agreed with all of this stuff if it works for you it's absolutely the right decision and you know the reason I didn't go for a Kemper sooner is because I couldn't justify it mm. having all the valve amps and stuff yeah. but I will admit now I've bought one things have been mm. sold yeah right. you know and it's not because I was always clinging on to that like oh I've got this amp which is perfect for rock but I only do four yeah, rock gigs yeah, yeah, a year yeah, you yeah. know which is really unfortunate um now but um it's great having the Kemper so if those gigs come up pow it's there mm. you don't, I don't have to keep hold of a load of amps just in case um that's not saying it's going to replace valve amps well actually one of the things that, that it's doing is reminding us how much we love valve amps oh yeah it's kind of sold some amps to me through listening to the profiles Definitely. you know what I mean yeah 100% um and they're surprisingly accurate. Yeah, uh, yeah I agree. When you listen to them, I've done a little bit of profiling in the studio, and when you listen to them back to back, sometimes it's fairly yeah, indistinguishable. Yeah. They feel slightly different, but not any different than one model to another of, you know, a similar amp style, different brands. You know, it just feels a bit different. Mm. It's not better or worse it's just it's diff different. different at that, at that point it's just different so thanks for checking this video out guys really appreciate you uh dropping by and uh listening to us natter and play let us know what you think of the slightly different format here just sitting having a chat i mean we will venture back outside i'm sure <laughs> at some point but while the weather we're having a bit of a winter season a bit of a hibernate so let us know if there's anything uh any subjects or gear that you want us to touch on in yeah, the future. yeah you know and uh Remember to go over to Dan's channel and subscribe. My, my severely neglected <laughs> channel. But uh, also, if you uh, leave comments, like, or subscribe to my channel, it's always massively appreciated. So thanks very much, guys, and see you next time. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>